Hi, I'm Tara Moss. I'm the author of 13 books of fiction and non-fiction, and I'm very excited about my new release called The War Widow. Now, I've been obsessed with the 1940s since I was a young girl, and there's lots of reasons for that. So I find it kind of amazing after 20 years and 13 books that I'm finally writing about this period. The War Widow is set in Sydney in 1946, and it features my central character of Billy Walker. Now, she's been described as a, let's see, a staunchly feminist, fast-driving, fast-talking, champagne-swilling Nazi hunter investigator. And I think that's pretty apt. And that's kind of like a girl gang that I want to be part of. She's a wonderful character that I really enjoy writing. Um, now, I have written this book, uh, again, with Billy Walker as main character, and I've dedicated it to my Oma and Opa. So, as I mentioned, I've been obsessed with the 1940s since I was little, and one of the reasons is my Oma and Opa. This is my Opa. I always thought he looked a little bit like Humphrey Bogart. Um, and here's another picture of them, my Oma and Opa on their wedding day and some of the, uh, my mom's side of the family there. But one of the stories I wanted to share with you is from their time in Nazi-occupied Holland. Uh, they were in Neumannsdorp, which is south of Rotterdam, and they had young children at the time when the Nazis occupied the Netherlands. And my opa was taken from the family, and forced to work in a um, Nazi work camp in Berlin. It was a munitions factory, uh, and he was taken there. You can imagine what that was like, especially my Oma now at home with these young kids. And very bravely, she used to cycle across Holland all the way to Berlin, smuggling flour and sugar in the hollows of her bicycle to take him those ingredients. Because you see, he was a baker and he would take those ingredients and he would bake bread in the munitions oven in order to bribe the foreman. And it worked. One day the foreman gave him a day pass and that's how he escaped the Nazi work camp. He basically spent the rest of the war um, under cover of darkness, uh, hiding out. And after the war, they came to Canada. And that's why I was born in British Columbia on the beautiful west coast of Canada. So this book is dedicated to them and really to all the ordinary citizens who did extraordinary things during World War II and the post-war period. Like I said, Billy Walker is a, a pretty wonderful, tough, central character. She takes a leaf out of the hard-boiled tradition, but she twists it. Um, we just haven't seen enough of those wonderful female PIs from the 40s, and they did exist. I researched quite heavily in this era. They were incredible women, and we haven't heard enough of them. So here's a very short reading from The War Widow. Billy reached along the wall to her right, her fingers searching like spiders until they found a protruding light switch she flicked it down. The light came on with a start, illuminating the small single room as a lightning bolt would have done, revealing a diorama of horrors, then going out, plunging her back into darkness before flickering on again with a faint and steady hum. Billy did not scream. She did not flinch. She just looked at him. Con Zervos' uniform was hanging over a chair, but he wasn't in it. He was dressed in a suit, with some of the shirt undone, but he was on his back on top of the white bedsheets, his eyes bulging and unseeing, his tie wrapped tightly around his neck, making everything above it blue. He was looking straight at her, through her, one hand at his neck, the other hanging down at the end of a dangling arm and almost touching the patterned carpet of room 305. So Billy finds herself embroiled in a case that at first seems very simple, but is not at all. And as the bodies pile up and the uh, intrigue continues, we find that she is messing with the high end of town and some of the very darkest and um, most dastardly uh, post-war villains you can imagine. I really hope you enjoy The War Widow. It's a fast-paced and fun romp, but also one that explores social justice issues, human rights issues, the Holocaust. Um, and I think these topics really resonate with 2020 and the things going on today. I hope you enjoy this book. Thanks for listening.